Hello everyone and welcome back to the Ultimate SharePoint Content AI Deep Dive Series. Before we deep dive into all the amazing features in the future episode, we really wanted to reserve this first episode to ask probably one of the biggest questions that your decision makers will have. Is it even worth it? So in this episode, we will spend time looking at multiple scenarios, real life examples, and even how to use the Microsoft 365 assessment tool to discover what processes you could optimize in your Microsoft 365 tenant. In this video, I'm joined again by both Drew Madelong and Gokunov Shivchi, who will be able to share their real life experiences about SharePoint Content AI. Welcome back to both of you. Thank you, Vlad. Thank you. And looking forward to talk about uh, content AI and how it affects it and your value in your organization. So starting off, this thinking about SharePoint content AI, we are thinking about SharePoint. And it's about the files and documents that you have in your organization. This lit, the files in Teams, the files in SharePoint, the files in OneDrive. They are all valuable information that somehow supports your business in some way. Content AI is a set of features that empowers SharePoint and, and makes and brings that data value to life. Now, when you're thinking about this though, SharePoint Content AI is a solution that will solve specific problems. So when you're looking at deploying and managing Content AI and the different feature sets you'll see throughout this series, ask this question to yourself is what are these problems? Do I have a problem in my organization or a scenario that I would benefit using these solutions? Some of these solutions have some very complex scenarios, and some of them have some very basic scenarios. When you're looking at the business value, though, Gokum, what do you think when you're looking at the business value of Content AI? Like, whenever you extract information with Content AI and put them in your document library, it becomes part of SharePoint, as you said. Like, it, it's, it's part of SharePoint. And, and whenever that data is available for your end users, well, you can go every side within that diagram and you can use that data to build either low code applications or pro code applications even use that into like pmp search or microsoft search um, make that data ready for for copilot or even apply some dlp and labeling from a compliance perspective the business value is that high that whenever the data is in sharepoint that you can go anyway and use and consume that data. And the customers just love the fact that stuff that they have been forgetting for years that comes into a SharePoint and that they can use that as a solid foundation to go further has no price for them. And that's what I, we try to explain is with that image is that once it's available in SharePoint, it can go up anywhere. And in thinking about that, that's a lot of information, right? You could have millions of hundreds of millions of documents that you might be wanting to extract information. You might be doing OCR. We might want to make new documents. Each of those have very specific scenarios that you might have to identify within your organization. And with that, that will lead to some of those challenges. The first challenge you can think about is all of the solutions that value you're going to have is based on a pay-as-you-go solution. So you need to think about the, va the, the cost that this is going to take, but depending on the type of solution that you're working at in Content AI as you think about the series. Each of these will go through what the prices are, what the cost can be, and how to set up pay as you go in the future. But keep those in mind as you're thinking about, is, Cope, is SharePoint Content AI worth it? It's going to be based on the scenarios that you build. When you deploy this, it will require training. You'll see in, these, you'll see in the upcoming videos that there can be some very complex topics in the model generation and it will it is not something you can simply set some of them are easier than others but it does require end user training which does mean that they to get the right value you have to educate those makers build champion programs build the right knowledge in your organization to, to take advantage of these content ai solutions or else it's just a it is a solution without a problem it is not fit for all unstructured data the the scenarios you're looking for are going to be specific in, when you get into the content extraction, autofill, using disk generative AI solutions, you're not going to use that in OneDrive, right? There's not, probably not, there's not going to be scenarios that you need just migrating a file share and, and doing it on everything. It's not necessarily a right use case for content AI and, and content extraction. So think of the specific use cases in your world. And once you start running these, we are in an interesting time now of trust. 
that like, do you trust the AI solution? So if we're extracting addition, <laughs> for the record, do you, do you trust that data that's being pulled out? So we're in a trust but verify. It depends on your scenario, how much you want to trust an LLM to validate invoice cost. Do I make an approval based on an LLM extracted information? And with that, we don't know where to start, right? You can say, oh, I, have con I want to do better content. I want to do better document processing. That's great. That's a great conversation. But how do you even know where to start in your organization? When you think about this, trying to find that value and where to start, you're going to look at the higher value complexity scenarios that Content AI brings around content extraction and autofill. Those are going to be the core two of is SharePoint Content AI worth it? Look at those two. That will be, our, in our opinion, the highest path to providing value. They will have a higher cost consumption, but they will give you more value than the other solutions that are there because it takes more time to set them up. So when you look at things like document translation, annotations, the PDF merge and extract functions, they're just part of the solution. As you, they become more complex, you need to spend more time to find that value. And to do that in your organization, you want need to know where to start. And one of the things that Vlad talked about at the beginning is there is a Microsoft 365 assessment tool available for you today to go scan and look that data in your organization. So instead of going through slides, I'm gonna go straight into it and let's talk about what the M365 assessment tool looks like. And it's free. And this is a free tool that you get out there today. So to start, one of the things you can look at is it is in the learn documentation that there is a section out there under the syntax section. So the materials that you're going to see are still branded with syntax. As we talked about in the first video, uh, it has been an evolution and some of the documentation and materials are still not up to date with where we are positioning the content A practice or the content A solutions. So you can start and learn and you can see that this does provide documentation around a syntax assessment tool. What you get, what you'll do is you're going to go down here and to run the assessment, you will have to go to the, actually out to a separate location to grab the documentation where we'll download the tool, we'll decide an authentication method, we'll configure permissions to run the scan, and then we'll run the syntax assessment, in this terms, the M365 assessment. So first, when you download the tool, you're going to go out to a site called the M365 assessment tool site, very specific, with a link to download the tool. They're, They're as creative as me. It's incredibly creative. Uh, you will see as you look through this that this tool has been enhanced over the years. So this was originally built for the Workflow 2013 deprecation to go scan your environments uh, wow. and InfoPath services as you're going through deprecation. And it has been added into a role for syntax adoption, our world content AI adoption, to figure out where your organization would benefit from that. Once you download the tool, I'm just going to give you an example. It's just an EXE that you download. That's all it is. Once you download it, you need to configure authentication. This, since this is uh, a graph-based tool that will scan, you will set up an Entra ID. So if you, all of the documentation includes how to set everything up in here. It actually includes the PowerShell commandlet to go run and register the, register the app. It will require site stuff full control all, as expected, because we'll be scanning our SharePoint sites, right? So this is a highly privileged app. I recommend building one just for the scan. It's fine. You can always delete it after the fact. Should you be, do you need to be a global admin or maybe an enterprise app admin? What is the minimum role to set this up? So the role to set this up will be a standard user can create the app registration, but to, to grant permission to the app, to the permissions themselves, how will have to be a global administrator to grant okay. that permission because these are application level permissions because this app will have access to the entire tenant to be able to do whatever it wants in the tenant because that's to scan every SharePoint site in your tenant. So make sure you pay a beer to your global admin. And make sure you have the right approval and say it's temporary. I just need to do a scan for that site's full control all. So in my example, I actually, here's my Microsoft assessment tool application. I actually use this for some other scenarios. So I have granted some other permissions to support it. But you'll see I have site's full control application delegated depending on how I want to run it. So you can run it as delegated. You can run it as application. And then from an authentication perspective, it will be a certificate. So you want to run a standard entry app configuration, create a self-signed cert, put on the device that you want to run it on, upload the certificate into the application, and then the M365 assessment tool will use that certificate and that authentication to run the assessment. Now, what it looks like when you run it, so great. I've now created app. I downloaded the tool, created the app. All we need to do is I'm going to go down and open the application. You're going to see it has this nice little GUI for us right there. Look like Star Wars. It looks great, right? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start an assessment, and then I'm also going to go to one that I've already ran because it will take some time to run in your tenant. 
Uh, the, if you have a very large tenant, I would definitely expect this to take quite a bit of time in the many hours for it to run with the potential for throttling around that because this will use that application. It will finish, it runs in the background, you can close the application. So what I do, if I wanna start something, there is a, I'm just gonna copy this and I'll talk about it over here. You'll run a command that's simply gonna say, I want to start the assessment. The mode is gonna be syntax. So we're not doing the workflow or info path, we're doing a syntax assessment. I'm putting our, my application in, or sorry, the, uh, the auth mode is gonna be application specific. So I'm using app permissions. My tenant is timely. I have my uh, application ID, so it's kind of cross both, but I have my application ID, which is that enter ID right here. I have my cert pass, so I have a local cert. I did a self-signed cert, put it on my machine. This is my, my path to that device or to my cert. And I'm running a syntax full. That's the main one right there we're running. A syntax full assessment. When I execute this, it's going to connect. It's going, you'll see it's going to start this M365 assessment and it will start to scan. You can see my tenant, or right, it started. So that's done. It's now running. I can say status and you'll actually see it live running in my tenant to see it scanning this information. So it's scanning, I have th this is uh, one of my lab environments. We have 337 sites there. You'll see it slowly go through this content. Once it's done, I'm gonna go to the results of one. So I could say, skip out of that, I could say list. You're gonna see I have one that was finished and one that was running. So when that was finished, you see the start time, the progress of it. What happens when you're done? Is it exports a CSV, you can export a CSV of all of the sites, but what it really gives you is a Power BI report. So coming to the beginning here, we have a syntax assessment report, which is our content AI assessment report. Just pretend that says content AI. And you'll see we have a large collection of pages, a large collection of reports. And what these are gonna be used for is to identify locations in your tenant that have the potential uses for content AI which can be things like libraries with custom columns. If people are creating custom columns, they're probably doing something like more advanced, a more advanced power user. One I really love is libraries with custom content types. If a power user is making a custom content type, they know what they're doing. Yeah, pro pro hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> hopefully. If not, this might open up another can of worms for them. But if you think about, if I have 100,000 SharePoint sites, you could probably get rid of 98% of them by simply looking at something like this and saying, these are people that, or these, areas of the business have sites that someone has done something to them that goes beyond standard SharePoint user administration that might be useful for the content AI features that we'll be talking about in the rest of the series. And they will need to talk to these people, call, do some type of conversation about them to say, let's find out, will this be beneficial for you? Because the answer, is it worth it? It'll be answering if it's worth it as these sites, if we can, if content AI will be enhanced by using them and then get feedback from them to say those sites that have custom content types or sites that are very large, that because you could have very large sites might be transactional processing they want to use. You might have pre-built, it already has literally pre-built model candidates based on the names. So we have a whole video on pre-built models. You actually have a scan here of libraries where the name matches pre-built models to know this might be a prime location that we can go talk to them and educate them on what pre-built models exist. And you actually, and if you are starting to run models out there, you actually can see where models are. So you can actually start to use it to track a little bit of information about it to say, maybe you, you've turned it on and you kind of want rogue content AI, right? There's nothing necessarily wrong with that. You could turn it on and people start doing it. And then you can start to talk to them and say, maybe what are you doing in that location? Let's talk a little bit more about the, the models that you've built. So what do you think about this, Gokin? Pretty amazing. Like, um, I'm pretty sure like a lot of organizations can profit about that and learn about themselves. I'm pretty sure like 99% of, of organizations have no clue idea who does build what. And that tool gives you phenomenal insights. And the last part you showed about, about AI models, that's perfect. Like you can go and talk to them and, and try to understand why they've build, been building that, the purpose of it, and maybe empower them, help them promote them so I, I think it's phenomenal honestly that's so cool so when you're asking the question right is SharePoint content AI worth it yes <laughs> for sure I don't think we'd be doing the series if we yeah, said amazing if we didn't believe in it <laughs> but there are more to that right Gokin there's, there's more to simply saying it's worth it that it takes a little more time it, it it's definitely needs use cases if you ask me um, 
because and, and within that video series we're gonna show you a lot of features and how it was working but you will never go or be able to sell that to your customer if there is no use cases attached to it and let me give you a few examples on how i could sell content ai to to my customers one of them which is the biggest manufacturing company in the benelux region uh, in europe by the way um just used uh, macros in order to create documents with pre-filled um, metadata coming from somewhere like they they contacted me and said like hey we heard about copilot can copilot help us and i said look that scenario is exactly what content ai can do for you with the content assembly right i just have like a template of my my document and i just need to fill in a few words from coming from a list or from a management of data or from other data and then print that invoice out or print that contract out and they were just mind blown on how easy that was done with 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 content ai another example is um my customer um in the french region was using um epicor i'm not sure if you guys know what epicor is but i've yeah i've had experience with it there you go like it's it was an invoicing um tool that they've been using for the last 10 years and and they had no contract anymore with them no support anymore they didn't know what to do and then they contacted me like hey can you help us with that in transforming that to a power app i was like yes we could it's gonna cost you a million dollars because it's too much or we can just go for content ai and then build a model which can extract that information for you and you know what we use a pre-built model because wow. all the information they needed came from a pre-built model so in a few clicks they were simply amazed and that's how i could sell content ai because i had a use case there was a problem and content ai could help them and we got a fast result that's how you could sell the the content ai part in your organization so you have that so what you're saying content extraction this content assembly is content AI requires scenarios yes there are some that don't right so those are the core ones when you're looking at is, is sharepoint content AI worth it the answer is yes when you find those scenarios for the higher value higher there you go ones there you go there are still content AI features that you that just work you want to work with content query you want to do pdf management you want to do some taxonomy work it's some very basic stuff that's there you do need to have training for this, right? So the, the, when you worked with those customers, you, you had to teach them what content assembly was. You had to l educate them what models are. That's what we hopefully do in this series, that we are going to educate you around that, around those uh, potential technologies that exist and how to you use them. But you need to take them in your business. You need to take them, take what we're sharing with you and build your own training adoption campaigns in your organization or link us to our playlist and send them all of this <laughs> stuff. Um, but kind of think about this. It is hard to measure ROI. So... You're going to have cost against this. You're, you're not going to be able to necessarily build ROI directly on the content AI usage that exists. We recommend using things like survey and feedback. So take that assessment tool after things have happened. You've deployed content AI. You've deployed these features. Then you come back and say, let's talk with them again and say, have we improved that invoice, have we improved that invoice processing? And that can bring you back to say that value that we're spending and that consumption is worth it. Yeah. And uh, like you said, I think the first step now that we decided that was worth it uh, is to set up pay as you go, which is a bit of the foundation of it all. And even if you do not go forward after, like you said, some features after you set up pay as you go, just start working. So in the next episode of the series, that's exactly what we are going to cover. So uh, you should see the link to it appear on your screen right now. Uh, we hope you're going to go watch it. And uh, thank you so much to Ren Goken for sharing your real life exper experience and examples on this one. And uh, we hope to see you all in the next episode in this series.